What's on the most exhilarating ride of your career? That's got to be tough. Really, I think it was in Arkansas. We spent four or five hours in the hills, and it was just rain and fog. You couldn't cool. see more than like 50, 100 meters in front of you, and it was just hours of racing like this on closed roads. And I remember being back there in the RDX, um, well, you know, getting bottles, because you, when you need more water, you go to the car, you grab them, put them okay. in your jersey, and you ride back up. So I remember actually being with the RDX, just through all these rolling hills and all this fog, and I couldn't see the riders in front of me. Oh, weird. It was just me, the Acura. <laughs> I was like, this is like a, my own personal photo shoot. I wish someone was here to take photos of this. Yeah. But that was probably one of the coolest things I had done because it was like, it was the conditions that you dream about. Yeah. Just as an athlete. What's something about the sport of cycling that people don't know? It's surprising how many people don't realize the importance of drafting on a bicycle. It, it's really the, the advantage of following another rider through the wind. And it's, it's a huge advantage. People wonder, like, oh, well, it's a team sport. I don't exactly understand. Like, how do you guys work together? And sometimes you need to go from the cars because someone's had a mechanical or they've crashed or they're getting a bike change or something of the sort. And you have to ride in the wind all the way up into the group. And then you have to go up towards the front of the group where it's safer, where you're actually part of the race. Yeah. Um, and, wild. yeah, I mean, without teammates to do that, uh, you're at a big disadvantage. So the drafting really just... Uh, kind of dictates what happens in a bike race. But the car is uh, an essential part of what we do. Um, so certainly you have support roles, but you mm -hmm. also have the car in the race. Um, it is part of the race. It's a command center. Command so we center. have we have the director, we call it, uh, the equivalent of a coach who's calling the strategy, the tactics. When there is a race, the, the director's in the car. But the car is the hub of everything that's going on during a bike race. And why the RDX? Well, first place to start, other than it looking cool. Yeah, you guys and badass. Look sweet, yeah. <laughs> uh, the one, one thing that I've experienced in the past with other team cars were that when they were uh, underpowered, you're actually at a disadvantage because the cars following or the caravan, you could have anywhere from 10 to 50 cars following with the police and the support staff. Like, we'll have two cars following sometimes. But there's actually a jockeying for positioning so that you mm -hmm. can help your riders when they need to be serviced for a bottle or a flat. Well, with the Acura RDX, you don't have to worry about, oh, okay, well, our car couldn't make it over the hill today. Or, you know, because yeah. we go over these big mountains that no one in the right mind would want to go up. Right. Um, and then if we ever <laughs> need to chase back, we're off the back of the group at any point. Uh, the, the RDX, we can just get right on that bumper, mm -hmm. and like I talked about drafting earlier, and they can just take us through any turn, any climb, any speed. I mean, because we'll be, behind, wow. be on that bumper, you know, for a rider at like 60 miles an hour, and we know that we can trust that the car can handle the corner because we're a little more nimble for, than most cars. But the, actually, I, you lose the accurate through the corners. I'll have to have my director slow down for me because <laughs> he can actually hit the corners faster than me, which normally isn't the case. Are there uh, any funny interactions between the drivers and the riders that, oh, like, God. Oh, yeah. any blooper? <laughs> like, not bloopers, but... Oh, we actually have a few videos of such things happening. Um, two years ago in the Tour of California, we were leaving Santa Barbara, and I was having a really bad day, and we were... It was a 100-mile stage, and I was 20 miles in, maybe. So I dropped back to the car because I had sunblock all over my hands. I was just uncomfortable. My hands are slipping. And I go back to the car, and I'm like, do you have a rag? Do you have anything? And my director's like, no. I'm like, well, mechanic has to have a rag. And he, so he gets it. He gives it to me. It's a dry rag. I'm like, could you wet it a little? So I give it back to him. This whole interaction is going on while we're climbing a mountain. And so the, you know, the group's still 30 seconds ahead of us. You know, I need to make sure I don't get dropped too much. And then they hand me the rag with a little water. And at one point, I'm wiping my face, and grease gets on my face. Oh, God. But I don't know. And you hear the mechanic be like, oh, no, he got grease on his face. So everyone in the car knows what's going on. I have no idea. I'm like, OK, cool, thanks. Oh, And I leave. Gosh. So they're just there to just laugh at the fact that well, I have grease on my face for the rest of the race. You also have to remember that the race that Tom is speaking about is also televised in 120 countries live. So oh, my gosh. Yeah, it may not have been just mechanics I knew, but a few other people. Oh, that possibly. That is hilarious. <laughs> I try to ignore that fact. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to follow you guys. Cheers again. Oh, yes, to cheers. 2015 and, and to Portugal. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I expect every one of you guys to watch TV this summer, like know everything there is about bike racing. Yeah. <laughs> if you could ever be at an event um, where our team is and get a ride in the team car, oh. change your life.